Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, at Telston Fitzgerald, holder the first at your service again. And uh, what would I like to discuss today? I don't know. Freaking. I don't feel like making a video. I don't feel like making a video. I, uh. What was my whole... You all know I like primarily linguistics, right? Linguistics primarily is my infatuation. Language. Language. And linguistics and its subsets. And I'm mentioning this for, for specific reasons as I will go into details as we speak some more. Phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, prag pragmatics, applied linguistics, sociolinguistics, psycholinguistics, etc., etc., etc. But I try not to get into psycho and um, applied and sociolinguistics. I more look at um, figurative devices, the non-literal aspect of language. And not irony, sarcasm, and all that stuff so much, but primarily metaphors and analogy I find intriguing. And today, uh, someone mentioned uh, used uh, the dropping of an object into a pond, an ocean, or a puddle. Puddle is a word? Or pond. And the ripple effect. They constituted the ripple effect as an analogy to explain how sound pervades, permeates, or immerses itself into the atmosphere when there's an impact created by, 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 by a... Blah, blah, blah. Put your thoughts together, dude, by a vibration. And I found that to be appalling because I have a deep-seated infatuation. I mentioned you all earlier, linguistics, metaphors, and analogy. And that is such a poor analogy. Such a poor... That's a poor analogy to define. If you want to give a visual perspective, in terms of what happens when sound is produced and you use the splashing of a rock into a pond and you use the, the ripple effect as a metaphorical reference somewhat, but that's a poor analogy because that is a latitude, that is a latitudinal impact. When the rock hits the water and it splashes, it creates uh, the wave and the vibration. It's, an, it's latitudinal, latitudinal. It's a latitudinal impact. And that is in stark contrast to when sound is produced. We're going to get into details of how sound is produced on a fundamental level. But first to begin, you, you can't discuss sound without discussing light because you've always seen the word sound and light parallel with, the, with each other as being cousins because they're both um, conducive to the same kind of wave-like traveling kind of format. And that's another poor not... Let's, let me explain, let me explain something. Excuse me, that is so unprofessional, I apologize. Sound cannot travel in a vacuum. You know what a vacuum is? A vacuum is, 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 is an empty space. Where, well, well, in this, not in the strictest sense, is when particles or, 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 or molecules is removed from the vacuum and the atmosphere level is low, right? It is considered a vacuum. But there's no such thing as vacuum because there's always be particles and matter, just like space is considered considered a huge, ginormous, astronomical vacuum um, um, surrounding celestial objects. So, sound cannot travel with, in a vacuum. Here's why sound cannot travel in a vacuum. Because when an impact is made, like I, let's say I bitch slap myself. You heard that? I bitch slap myself. That is an impact. The impact creates a vibration what the vibration does is the impact causes energy to vibrate and this vibration collides what happens in the atmosphere is air molecules collide with each other now sound travel at around 700 miles an hour you know that is one to the speed of light light travel at uh how much 186,262 or 262,000 miles an hour but that's a whole different subject so when i hit my bitch slap myself pow there's a sudden impact. It creates a vibration, and the vibration causes friction. It collides with air molecules in the air. So it is really the collision of air molecules, and we all know that air molecules, a single molecules, is a group, is a consist of groups of atoms. And we know what's in an atom: proton and, and, and neutrons bind together, form a nucleus, and spiraling miles away relative to the size of the atom is the electron. It is groups of atoms. How groups of atoms come together and form a molecule is a Whole different subject. But it's air molecules colliding and clashing in the air while it's spiraling. But it's not like the ripple effect. 
is not really like a wave, man. It is really the energy um, that vibrates from an impact when I bitch slap myself, causes a molecule in the air to collide, right? And then the, our human perception and our senses, our eardrums interpret it as sound. Light is a whole different phenomenon, right? Sound can penetrate opaque, opaque or, 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 or non-transparent objects, whereas light cannot. Light, on the other hand, now consists of... Light is like a wave and a particle at the same time, simultaneously. You all remember um, 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 Niels Bohr, um, the, I think in 1928, the Danish physicist who, um, who um, coined the idea of the principle of complementarity, complementarity, where light acts as both wave and particle simultaneously, meaning that they cannot be observed simultaneously. You could only in, 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 um, be viewed um, independently. But if you really think about it, really look at it, a stream of wave, a wave, of light, right, consists of just tiny little dots of particles, right? And the reason I'm mentioning this is because it's a kind of like a duality. It's like a paradox, how two things could be, how it could be two completely mutually exclusive uh, things at once. And here's an analogy I'll use. It's a quite poor analogy, octaves, musical octave, where you have a low C and a high C, right? It's two different frequencies. It's almost the high C octave C frequency doubles the lower frequency, but it is kind of like the same note. Or this pervasively uh, ambiguous image online, where you have, uh, you have uh, two black faces facing each other, but in the middle there's an hourglass. Now, you could view the, view the hourglass or you could view the black faces, but they cannot be viewed simultaneously. So this is a primary example of the light wave duality, somewhat with that pervasively online image where they cannot be viewed simultaneously. You have to look at the black faces or you have to look at the hourglass. Or the analogy I use of the higher or the lower octave to kind of explain the duality or the contrasting difference between light. Now, light travels in streams of particles called photons. Photons of street. And light travel at the speed of light. And the speed of light is constant. This level of velocity maintains itself. Right? Light is an independent... Light basically is called is a electromagnet, electromagnetic radiation. It's electricity and magnetism working together in harmony. It's like a synchronicity. It's like a symbiosis. It's like a, it's like a fundamental particle symbiosis. Um... And um, what's gonna say? It's like a sim. It's like a. It's like a symbi. It's like a symbiosis, right? That's not really how sound work. Sound need and so light could travel in a vacuum. Light could travel in space. Light could travel in an empty vacuum. Sound cannot. Sound need air molecules to bounce off each other to create this collision in order for it to travel. So they're kind of mutually exclusive, you know. You can't say light and sound is the same. So too, you can't say light and sound is the same wave. Same wave. Because they're both contingent on mutually exclusive mediums. Light can travel in a vacuum, but sound cannot. Right? L sound can penetrate opaque objects, whereas light may not necessarily be able to... to light cannot penetrate opaque or non-transparent objects. No, light can um, penetrate transparent or translucent objects if it pertains to exceptions to the rules such as a glass, right? Now, how light penetrates is a whole different subject, but specifically within the context of sound, how sound penetrates a wall, again, is the vibration of air, the molecules in the air. Molecules is not really a wave. And, and sound is more of a, like a vibrating, it's like a, sound is like a, it's like a, it is not when you drop a rock in the ocean and the ripple effect. That is not, because that is latitudinal. Space is three-dimensional. Front, Back, up, down, left, right, right? Latitude, longitude, altitude, or, 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 or length, width, breadth, or, or depth, sorry, or height, whichever, right? So you have to take three dimensional into perspective. When I'm speaking to you all, it is, it is my, my, the, 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 the sound is permeating the air, but it's, it's three dimensional. Well, four dimensional also, you have to take time into consideration, which is the measurement of duration, past, present, and future duration. So, so time, so sound. It's more like an expanding bubble. When an impact is created, um, when there's an impact, there's a vibration. The vibration collides with the air molecule, right? And then it creates frequencies. And now, what frequencies now, basically, is a whole different sub. Frequencies is the number of hertz. Well, okay, what hertz is? Frequencies is the number of vibration. What hertz refers to, H-E-R-T-Z, hertz refers to the number of vibrations per cycle or per second. That is a whole different subject. So, what I was going to say, sound... 
is a vibration of molecules. That's why sound cannot travel in, in, in a vacuum. So the sound and light is quite mutually exclusive. The, and the ripple effect is a poor analogy. Sound, let me get to the point. The whole point of making this video was to say, sound is like an expanding bubble. Right? It might be oval, elliptical, but it distorts itself as it expands at 700 miles an hour while it interacts, while the air molecule expands and interacts with external particles, might be objects, opaque objects, but as it expands and it interacts and it collides and it, it, it distorts, it's, it's a distortion, but it's not really a ripple and it's not so much an actual wave. The whole level of collision is conducive to air molecules in the air that's traveling. Light on the on a, on, 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 on the other hand now is like a snail carrying his house on his, his back. Light is an independent factor. By the way, sound also true slows down depending on the temperature, where the temperature if the, the uh, if it's more dense atmosphere it may travel faster because there's more air molecule in the air, of course. So that is ex that's that from an explanatory perspective explains that it's not so much a, a wave fundamental like light. Light is a wave particle duality, it's streams of photon and how light or atom or photon creates different colors is a different subject. But my point for this video was saying that light and wave is mutually exclusive. Right, and the analogy, the ripple effect of us dropping an object into a water is a very poor anal analogy because it's latitudinal. Right, and sound have to take latitude, longitude, and altitude into consideration because we deal with a three, four dimensional universe. Right, I remember I told you all what the three dimensional is. Four dimension deals with uh, um, the, 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 the timeline of the past, present, and future, the, the measurement of duration. Right now, space and time is con considered one another, it's called the space time continuum. Now, we're getting into special relativity and general relativity. Special relativity and general rel relativity is a whole different subject with time dilation and at the speed of light, time slows down, or the twin paradox and the clock, and also, and also the idea of gravity. Another subject, you know, gravity actually arises from the, from the curvature in space and time. It's kind of from a relativistic perspective, mass. Mass tells space how to curve, and space space tells mass how to how to move, right? And this is kind of where gravity arises from the curvature in space and time. How did discover that space and time is one is a whole different sub subject dil time dilation. But we specifically delimit in the context of here. Of you all making a poor analogy. That's a poor analogy for sound. I'm not a scientist. I'm not even into physics. I like lang linguistics, and when I see a poor analogy like that. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is an insult. Analogy and, pheno and, and metaphor is such a magnificent phenomenon. I find it appalling, appalling. It's, it's sinister when such discredit is done to it. Nevertheless, it's me at Telston Fitzgerald Holder. The first, I pulled my bow tie. It, this was actually a magnificent video. It was a far less than I anticipated. Stay visit my website, mrpregnant.com, and you all will be intrigued. Thank you very much. Have a magnificent evening.